hey, in this video, I want to talk about the things that I didn't upgrade that have held me back with my career. And I'm going to start off with something that I'm about to upgrade again, and I'm still holding off because they don't excite me, and that is computers. I worked on a MacBook Air for the first 10 years of my career. I cannot tell you how much time I wasted exporting, importing, crashing. It had like four gig of RAM or eight gig of RAM. It wasn't built for editing, especially not for phase one files or Canon 5DS files. I struggled on that bad boy for way too long before I bought a MacBook Pro. And now I've got a MacBook Pro, it's a quad core with 16 gig of RAM. And some of the work I'm doing, some of the stop motion, some of the big 100 megapixel files, some of the PSB files we've been working on have been just monstrous. And it sounds like a spaceship taking off. And again, I waste so much time and what I need to do, which is what I'm not doing, so do as I say, not as I do, is bite the bullet and buy a better computer before I upgrade my cameras. Now, next up is a good monitor. It's one of those things, I'm not techie, I don't like tech. I wouldn't be buying technical things if I didn't do this for a career. I'd probably have like a vinyl player and some manual espresso machine and that'd be my lot. But I need a good monitor. And the first time I sort of spent 700 pounds on a monitor, I felt heartbroken because it was so much money for something that I already had. But then I sort of started to see the difference. And when I say started to, it was night and day. A good calibrated monitor with good color science using something like a calibration machine, a color chart and a good monitor in a good location with good lamps. Night and day, it makes such a big difference to my workflow to my confidence as well. When I deliver something, someone goes, it's a bit dark. I'm thinking, yeah, I've looked at it on a perfectly calibrated good monitor. I have no idea what you're looking on. I'm confident that my image is correct and that you're probably looking at something under the wrong conditions. Get a good monitor. And then we come through to lights. I had bad lights for a long time. I worked for speed lights for way too long. My first studio was ran on speed lights. I had a wall of AA charges because my electric was included. So we just charged batteries all day. It was a long time until I went, you know what, we need good modifiers, good quality lights. We've got the Broncolor lights and modifiers and the Bowens lights and modifiers in the studio. And having that good quality stuff makes more of a difference than a good camera or a good lens or good editing. The light source is the most important thing. Good modifiers more important in my opinion than a good light, but the two should be at the top of your buying list in terms of camera kit. Should go modifier, light, lens, camera but get the computer first. Now, obviously you can see me in my studio here. I've had a studio for a long time. I probably had a studio for nearly a decade. Not always this one. Before this one, I had a very pretty one in the city center. It had nice wooden floors and it had a, a bank ceiling, which had these special things and stop people drilling through it to rob the place. It was nice. It was a good location. It was not what I needed. I should have aborted from there long before I did. I need a warehouse. I need to be able to smash stuff, build stuff, paint stuff, cook stuff, whatever it may be. I've got a workshop over there full of power tools. I've got a kitchen over here, prop storage over there. I don't want to tell you what's back there, but it's chaos. And I needed to get this big space, but it was scary taking on such a big rental agreement. And it held me back by not doing it. As soon as I got this space, the work that I can produce in here, if I want to smash stuff, I can smash stuff. If I want to throw eggs at the wall, I can throw eggs at the wall. It's just a warehouse. I can do what I want in here. I built an office, I can knock it down again. It doesn't matter. And having that ability to create in a space with no limits is something I should have jumped on far sooner than I did. Which brings me through to tripods. I didn't own tripods when I was a portrait photographer because I thought they were a waste of time. I didn't understand why anyone would ever need one. Obviously moving into the commercial world and then to the food world, I needed some good tripods. Having a good tripod is key. I would always buy used and I would say, say your budget is a thousand pounds, I'd buy a thousand pound used tripod rather than the brand new one. When you're buying good quality tripods, they just last. The one I'm using here, I've had now for seven years, it's flown, it's been on the train to France, to Brussels, it's been all over the world. It gets used every day. Nothing's ever gone wrong with it. It's perfect. It's built like a tank. My big Manfrotto salon stand, if I wasn't using that, I'd be going for some sort of boom arm situation with the camera wobbling and flailing in the wind. You just need to invest in these things. Don't buy them new though, because they're extremely expensive. I think a brand new salon stand, a cheap one's like three and a half thousand pounds. But when someone goes bust or needs to get rid of it, they're quite hard to get rid of, so you can catch a bargain. You just have to be sat there on eBay waiting for it to happen. Last one, and that is the test team. You have to invest in having a good test team. If you're a fashion photographer, you need to pay a good makeup artist, a good model. Don't just take some of purple port and expect to be able to produce commercially viable images. It's not gonna happen. Get to a modeling agency, hire a model, hire a makeup artist, hire hair, hire wardrobe, hire all these things in. 
For me, I pay the food stylist, we get the good food, we get the prop house, we get it all together, we bring it in, we hire the good cameras, we hire the good lights. It's got to be as if it's the biggest job you've ever done and you need to sink that money into it because your portfolio is everything. Having a good test team is so important. Now, obviously these are all things that I've skimped on in the past and I've lost out because of this. So hopefully my mistakes don't become yours and you can go rather than buying this new Canon R5 or 5R, whatever it's called, what I should really be doing is investing in test shoots. Or what I should really be doing is getting a faster computer because I can't work fast enough and I'm losing time waiting for renders and exports and all these sorts of things. Let me know what the biggest upgrades that you failed to make that held back your career were in the comments below and I'll see you all next time.